Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for another webinar, our series, Midland University. And we've got trading futures, commodities, and Forex with an IRA today. Our speakers are our senior associates, Rita Woods and Andy Anger. They're going to be our presenters today. I just wanted to go over a couple of things, mainly when it comes to questions. We may be answering live throughout the webinar. We may pause for questions and I'll be moderating. My name is Sasha Bretz, also a senior associate with Midland. So you should see to the right some options, chat, questions, polls, and people. Questions is where you should type your questions, please. You can use chat if you are experiencing any difficulties. We'll do our best to help you troubleshoot. Um, I can tell you that refreshing the page seems to be the cure-all. If you're having trouble seeing the video or audio at any point during the presentation. I also want to go ahead and let everyone know that if you're signed up for this webinar, you will be getting a recording of the presentation after the fact, it'll be sent to your email. So you will, everyone will get a um, recording of the presentation. I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Rita. She's going to begin. So I'm gonna get um, things going. Thank you again for attending. And Rita, that's all you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rita Woods, and I'm joined today uh, on this webinar with my colleague, Andy Anger. And together, we are going to discuss commodities in your IRA, whether that's being traded or being directly held as a tangible asset. So just a little bit about Midland. Uh, we do offer a self-directed IRA uh, custodian, as well as 1031 exchange qualified intermediary. Uh, so what we do is we act as an IRA custodian, uh, and then also on the uh, 1031 side, we are able to act as a qualified intermediary, so without the IRA advantages, but still an advantage tax-wise. So a little bit more about Midland. We do have three different offices throughout the country. Our main office is Fort Myers, Florida. We also have a Chicago location, as well as Sioux Falls, South Dakota. So we do have over $2 billion in assets, in client assets, and over 15,000 accounts throughout the nation. Midland ensures all elements of the administration of your account are performed properly and in compliance with the IRS. So we do file reports on your behalf of the IRA. We issue statements and we help you follow contribution limits and permissible transaction guidelines. So what does Midland not do? Midland does not give investment advice or endorse any products. All information and materials here are for educational purposes only. Please consult with your attorney, your accountant, or your financial advisor before entering into any type of investment. So why do I need Midland? The IRS requires that either a qualified trustee or a custodian holds the IRA assets on behalf of the IRA owner. So essentially, you're not able to hold your own IRA directly. Generally, the custodian will maintain the assets in all transactions and other records pertaining to them. The term self-directed simply means that the owner of the IRA has control over what investments the IRA makes. So by doing so, the IRA owners are taking control of their own retirement accounts, investing in what they know and understand best. So we make no commission on your investments and we do not sell investments. Instead, what we offer is a blank canvas. So this allows you to make non-traditional or alternative investments inside of your IRA. In comparison to traditional securities brokers, they limit your investments to traditional equities products that they in fact sell. So what are the benefits of an IRA? First and foremost, you're building for retirement. Most Americans, myself included, do not want to rely solely on social security. Now, when it comes to earnings growth, the next point, the gains with IRA and any IRA in general are going to be on a tax-free or tax-deferred basis to benefit you when you retire. 
So every time you make gains in your retirement account, they accrue without taxes. This is specific to uh, capital gains, so long as they remain inside of the IRA. Therefore, your principal grows at a higher rate for your next investment or even your next trade because no taxes were ever taken out from the gains. So you can also have tax deductions when you are making a contribution to your self-directed IRA. So while this does not apply to a Roth, most contributions to other retirement plans and self-directed IRAs are eligible for deductions on your income tax. And like I said, Roth IRAs, while you won't receive a tax deduction on your income taxes, these are still one of the most powerful and beneficial uh, retirement plans. And this is because all contributions, even though they're made after tax, the earnings grow on a tax-free basis, provided that certain requirements are met. So now onto the trading side. What types of accounts can I trade? So you have self-directed trading accounts, trading futures or currencies independently with a self-directed account. So this is for the experienced trader. Maybe you've had experience tra day trading, you're a broker yourself, and you're going to trade your own um, retirement account. We also see managed accounts. So we see managed futures brokers. So you're letting a professional money manager, like a broker or a CTA, do the trading for you. And last, we also see automated accounts. So automated trading programs are able to execute orders at high speeds following trading algorithms and signals, and you're able to do any of these three or a combination of them within your self-directed IRA account. So how does Midland fit in here? Our role, Midland Trust is going to be responsible for all the cash flow, the record keeping related to the IRA owned trading account. All deposits and withdrawals have to go through Midland. The trading account must also be held entitled to the IRA and not you personally. So the trading account titling would look like Midland Trust Company as custodian for benefit of FBO, your name and your account number with Midland, instead of it just being held to John Smith. And last, Midland handles the ongoing tax reporting for the contributions, rollovers, distributions of assets into your retirement account. Midland also reports on the annual market value of the assets. So this would be the trading account annual fair market valuation. So we get a lot of questions, and these, I would say, are the top questions that we come across. Um, I already sent in paperwork to my trading company to open the trading account. Do I still need to complete the Midland application? The answer, unfortunately, is yes. You will complete both an application for the trading account as well as one for Midland. We're two totally separate companies. We serve different functions, um, and at the end of the day, you're agreeing to Midland acting as a custodian. So that's one application and then another application for the brokerage acting as your trading company. So you will complete two applications in this process. Another question is what happens after my trading account is open? So after the account is open and funded, you'll work directly with the trading company or broker to place your trade requests. Um, you can do this through your online access with the trading company or by calling your broker directly. Uh, I want to remove funds from my trading account. Can I do this with them directly? Again, unfortunately, no. All funds, like we've uh, mentioned, do need to flow through Midland. So if you take the funds from your trading account directly, this could be deemed as a prohibited transaction. Um, but just to add a note, all the companies that we've been working with, we've been working with for years, and they are very well aware of this rule, and they will not let you run, you know, amok. They won't essentially send the funds to you directly and give you a prohibited transaction. So there is a safeguard in that. Um, I already have a trading account with this company. Do I need a new one? And unfortunately, again, Yes, IRA funds and personal funds can never be commingled in the same account. So you are adding a new trading account with the trading company. Um, 
you wouldn't be able to continue to use your personal one and put IRA funds into it. So, you know, just to sum it up, it's as easy as one, two, three. You really are having a three-step process. You know, you complete the IRA application, you complete your broker's application, and then you instruct Midland with a letter of direction uh, to actually wire the funds over to your new trading account. We will be able to send it directly by wire and you're able to get started trading immediately. So now I'm going to hand it over to my colleague Andy so he can talk more on the tangible commodities in your IRA, specifically precious metals. Hey, Andy, um, before I have you on, I did just want to remind folks that if you have a question, go ahead and type it into the questions box. Now, um, I did see a question pop up through chat. I went ahead and answered that. Ultimately, um, some questions are going to be for your CPA. Um, and it looks like we don't have any other questions right now. So we're going to answer all other questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you, everybody. And uh, Andy, go ahead. Hello, my name is Andy Anger, and I'm going to be talking about owning physical commodities. So owning physical, specifically gold and silver. Uh, your IRA can also hold platinum and palladium, but we found the most common metals are gold and silver. Now, what is the difference between futures and physical commodities. So futures is a contract. So it's more for short-term speculation. What you're doing is you're buying a futures contract to buy gold at an expiration, usually a month or a couple of months out. So you never actually hold physical possession of the gold or silver. When you have a futures contract of gold, like I said, you own a contract to buy X amount of gold at X amount of price in the future. With futures contracts, you're allowed leverage to some degree as the futures contracts are often traded, giving you the right to buy 100 ounces of gold or silver or mini contracts, which allow you to buy 33 ounces of gold or silver. Physical gold and silver, on the other hand, it's more for longer term holdings as they do not have a contract expiration date as futures does. They are a tangible asset. So you actually physically own the gold and silver that you buy through your IRA. The only downside with physical is there is no leverage allowed. So if you have $1,800, you can buy one ounce of gold, unlike futures. Uh, they'll probably allow you to buy 100 ounces or if you do a mini contract, 33 ounces. So owning physical gold and silver, what are the benefits? So the benefits is they do provide a hedge against equity fluctuations and inflation. They're longer term holdings as unlike futures, they don't have a contract expiration date. They're often less volatile than a futures contract because you don't have that leverage. That leverage can be a good thing or a bad thing for you, uh, depending on your, your risk tolerance. And asset growth and profits are tax deferred as they're in an IRA. So what are the IRS requirements of owning gold and silver in an IRA? Firstly, the gold and silver coin or bars must not be collectibles. Secondly, the IRS specifically states that the gold and silver must be in the physical possession of a trustee or depository. So what that means is you cannot hold on to the metals personally or put the metals in a safety deposit box at your bank. So per the IRS, here are the different types of gold and silver that you can hold in an IRA account. There's a lot of different options there. The most common ones that we see are the American Eagle coins, the Canadian Maple Leaf 
gold coins and silver coins, as well as gold and silver bars and rounds. So we'll just give everybody a couple of seconds to look at all the other options. But again, the most common are the American Eagle, Canadian Maple Leaf, and the bars and rounds. Andy, I have a question that I'm gonna go ahead and toss out to you here. Um, what defines a collectible for silver and gold? Would that be the fineness or is there another uh, element to that? Do you know? That is really a good question. It's something I don't really have the answer to at this time, but we can certainly look into it. Okay. This, what I have right now is directly from the IRS of the types of gold and silver that they will allow. So you can have an American Eagle coin. It could be from year 2012. It could be from the year 2020. So the year in itself doesn't necessarily make it a collectible. I'm not sure what coins would be deemed a collectible, but I'm sure there are some that are not listed here that are just given a much more higher value than what gold and silver spot price goes for. And I would imagine that the broker that you're buying metals from should be able to give you some insight onto what would be considered a, a collectible or not. Um, all right, and I do see uh, several other questions and we'll go ahead and answer those at the end and um, keep moving forward here, thanks. So again, the metals need to be stored with a trustee or depository. So what trustees or depositories does Midland work with? At this time, there are two of them. We work with Delaware Depository, which offers segregated and non-segregated metals accounts. And we work with First State Depository, which only offers segregated only. Segregated, it is more expensive to store metals this way with the depository. What it means is the gold and silver you buy and put in the, the depository is exactly what you will receive if you were to sell or do an in-kind distribution and take ownership of the gold or silver personally. So if you buy a shiny gold coin with a little nick in it and you do an in-kind distribution, you're going to receive that same exact coin with the little nick in it. And again, segregated it is a little bit more expensive than non-segregated. What non-segregated is, it means you can buy gold and silver, store it in a depository, and it's mixed with other similar metals. So if you were to sell the metals or do an in-kind distribution, you may not receive the same metals you originally purchased, but a like metal similar to it. So for example, say you bought 10, one ounce American Gold Eagle coins that were minted in 2015, and you decided you want to do an in-kind distribution and take ownership of those metals personally. The depository, they'll first try to give you similar coins. So they'll first try and give you 10 ounce, 10 one ounce American Gold Eagle coins that are minted the same year. If they don't have any though, you may receive 10 one ounce American gold eagle coins from another year, maybe 2016 or 2017. Okay. So how quickly can you buy and sell physical gold and silver? So the entire process can take between one to three weeks. And a lot of it depends on how invoices are being paid whether check or wire, and how metals are being shipped, if they're being FedExed overnight, two-day overnighted, if they're just being sent via regular US Postal Service. So for buying metals, typically it'll take one to two business days for us to set up an account with the depository for you. Another one to two business days for the processing of the Midland Letter of Direction paperwork so that we know who to send funds to for the metals deal you're buying the metals from. And then the metals need to be shipped and transferred from the metals dealer to your depository account that was set up. And again, 
you have a couple of options on how the metals dealer will ship you the metals. In regards to selling, usually it takes middle and around one to two business days to process the middle and letter of direction paperwork. It takes about two to five business days for invoices to be paid with the depository before the depository will actually ship metals to whoever you're selling them to. And often the metals will need to be shipped or transferred to the metals dealer, which again will depend on which option you choose to ship it to them. And the metals dealer will need to send either a check or wire to Midland. Obviously, if they send a check, it can take between two to 10 business days just for the check to be received in the mail. If they send us a wire, obviously that they'll expedite things greatly. Funds are available the next day. So Midland, we try and simplify the process to four simple steps for buying metals, specifically gold and silver in your IRA. The first step is to set up and fund an account with Midland. Second step is you let us know which depository that you want to work with, and we'll work with them on setting up the depository account for you. The third step is you will need to find a metals dealer and work on an invoice with them. So we need to know how much gold and silver you're buying from the metals dealer and at what specific price. And the last step is you complete a Midland letter of direction, allowing Midland to send funds to the metals dealer for the payment of metals and shipment to the depository. Now at Midland, you're assigned a dedicated client service specialist as soon as your account's open that will assist you throughout the entire process of funding the account to confirming the deposit of the metals into your depository account. So once your account's open at Midland, we don't leave you in the dark, we will handhold you throughout the entire process. And what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna hand this back over to Rita to finish the presentation. Thanks, Andy. So at the end of the looking to trade futures, Forex, or purchase precious metals in your IRA, you need a custodian to get started. And so you'll ask yourself, why should I use Midland? So, you know, we have a whole bunch of reasons. Uh, some of them are listed, you know, expertise, efficiency. Um, these are things that we really like to say are our bragging point. Our expertise, you're really not going to get this at most other custodians. I would dare say almost any other custodian. Midland is staffed with certified IRA service professionals. We have so many CISPs on staff that this is nothing but an advantage to you as a client. And it's nothing extra that you're paying for. That is what we are providing to you as a service. Um, we do offer more efficiency than most other companies. So we are going to ensure a timely turnaround for the funding of your investment by assigning you a dedicated account team, just like Andy had stated. Um, you'll always have a team to go to. You're not just going to be given a 1-800 number and call into an operator. You're going to have people's direct lines so that you always have a direct contact when it comes to Midland. Uh, when it comes to fees, we offer a competitive flat fee of $295 per year, regardless of the size or value of your account. Um, and then professionalism. You know, it's something that we, again, are always going to brag about is the fact that our staff at Midland are committed to a very high level of customer service and show a dedicated responsiveness to all accounts. It, and it always comes back to our service team. Uh, we really can't say more about it. And one other thing, Rita, for if, if you're looking to do just gold and silver physically in your IRA, the annual asset fee is $125 per year with Midland, if that's, that's the correct. only asset that you're looking to hold. So how do you get started? 
um, you know, you're going to start with the Midland application. Again, it's a three step process. Open the account at Midland. That is an online application. It takes maybe 10 to 15 minutes online. But once you've got that account completed, we have the account open within 24 hours. Uh, the next step is funding the IRA. That's going to be an IRA to IRA transfer, uh, a rollover from an old 401k, 403b, or other qualified retirement account into the IRA here, or even making an annual contribution or a combination of the three. You can fund with one method or you can fund with two or three methods. Uh, it's up to you. And then that third and final step is going to be completing the investment documents, which again, we're going to be here with you in that process to streamline it for you. You complete the brokerage account application if you're going to be trading futures, or you're completing the invoice with your metals dealer if you're going to be purchasing precious metals in your account. And we will have the funds wired out to your investment. You can get started trading, start purchasing uh, metals in the IRA, whatever you're looking to do, we're here to help in that entire process. Thank you so much, Rita and Andy, for sharing your expertise and knowledge in this area. Um, we do have several questions, and we'll do our best on answering those. Um, we may be sending emails out to any not answered here live on the webinar. So uh, let me just get these questions in front of me. Um, I'm going to field this to whoever wants to chime in uh, between Rita and Andy. I have a question. Uh, from Roby, can you tell uh, can you tell me a couple of future brokers which you guys work with? I can most certainly send you a list of trading companies that we work with. So this would be the actual FCM or Futures Commission Merchant that we work with, and these are companies that are familiar with IRAs and hold them um, as trading accounts along with Midland. Now from there deal with different brokers. So what you want to look at is which platform are you most comfortable with? Um, and from uh, a plethora of, of brokers that you're able to talk to, to introduce you to what it is that you're going to do with that trading company. So I can most certainly email you a list of, you know, all the futures companies that we work with with IRAs. Okay, so we'll make sure that we do that. Um, I'll go ahead and take this one question we have from Shirley. My self-directed IRA is in an LLC. Do I still need a depository? Uh, Shirley, yes, you do still need a depository. So with the IRA LLCs or checkbook LLCs, as they're often called, think of that as an extension of your IRA. So all of the same principles and regulations apply, self-dealing being the big one. So um, you're not allowed to, as an IRA account holder, physically hold the, the precious metals. So uh, by going through an LLC, that same principle applies. So you do need a depository, um, and the depository would be opened in the name of the LLC as opposed to that IRA vesting that we saw earlier. Uh, so let's see what else I can find. Um, okay. If uh, I already have an account. If I need to open another relationship with a different broker or depository, is it just an additional relationship with my current team or will it be a different team? Um, I'm not sure if you're referring to your dedicated representative, Clifford. And as Rita said, we pride ourselves on having personal service and a person that's committed to you. But sometimes if a investment type um, crosses where your rep may have experience, it is quite possible that you'll work with a different uh, representative. Um, maybe Andy, you can comment on um, how they would get connected then to a broker or a depository. The broker, I believe, is just personal choice. The depository, we do have First State or Delaware depository, and one of our uh, experienced representatives could get you in touch with them. Hopefully that answers the question, actually. Um, okay. Um, Andy, I think, answered this other question. Does Midland charge a fee for the depository? Um, yes, it is 125 annually. So, yeah, let go me ahead. clarify. So Midland 
to do our record keeping and reporting to the IRS, we charge $125 annually to do the record keeping and reporting to the IRS on depository accounts. And then the depository, they also charge their own fee for allowing us to have the storage of the metals with them. Now that'll depend on if you're doing segregated or non-segregated. And if you want, it's a lot of information to take in. We can certainly send this to you in an email. Delaware Depository for their segregated accounts, it's $1.60 per $1,000 in metals at $190 annually as a minimum. For non-segregated, it is 80 cents per $1,000 in metals at $95 annually minimum. And then for first state depository who offers segregated only, it's $1 per $1,000 of metals with a $125 annual minimum. Okay, perfect, Andy. Okay, uh, Doug asked, who determines who the trustee is that holds the physical gold? So we do work with those two depositories, Doug, First State and Delaware. Um, what it comes down to is we have certain requirements for reporting. Um, we've said that we're uh, record keeping and tax reporting. And Delaware and First State have been uh, depositories who have been willing to participate in reporting. They they are easy to work with and they understand the importance of reporting. And um, we've selected them um, because they are so willing to work with Midland in keeping your accounts properly reported. Um, you know, we in, in the past did allow you to choose your own depository, but uh, Doug, it, it just became easier to offer two honestly great solutions um, or options, I should say. So you do get to choose between those two. All right. Just trying to pick out. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, what advantage is there to holding physical gold or silver in the metal, uh, in, sorry, in the Midland IRA versus a physical gold ETF in a brokerage? Um, Andy, so I, that... I can answer that one. Okay. So when you have a gold ETF, it kind of trades along with the price of gold. You're still paying. Uh, annual fee though for the right to hold on to that ETF. So it's kind of a little hidden cost that the ETF has. It, it's probably around 1% of whatever you have in the ETF. But again, it'll vary by ETF. So depending on how much you have in gold or silver, can really play a huge role on how much you're paying for the right to buy stock in that ETF. And then also when you buy a gold ETF, you don't actually own the gold physically. You own the ETF, which is backed by gold. Great. Okay, um, I have another one. Uh, Rita, this will probably be for you. So if I have a Roth 401k and end my job, can it be rolled into an existing Roth IRA with Midland? And if so, do I have to keep it in the account for five years from the rollover or just five years from the initial time, the original creation of the Roth IRA with Midland? That's a great question. Um, and we um, come across that all in the clock started for your Roth. So um, when it comes to that clock starting, uh, you can put in additional contributions afterwards and you're not having an additional clock every single time. Um, that's something that the IRS obviously would have too much of a headache uh, managing and um, keeping track of. So when you start your original Roth, that's why people always encourage you start that clock as soon as you can, because that five years starts as soon as you make that initial contribution or that rollover. Now, I want to um, 
qualify that by saying that um, a Roth 401k is an unusual situation where if you roll over from a Roth 401k um, and you roll it over into a Roth IRA, that five years starts then. So in any other situation, if you kept the Roth 401k there, your clock had already started, it's restarting if this is your first Roth IRA. But if you're rolling it over into an existing Roth IRA, that clock had already started. I hope that answers it. Yeah, I think he just chatted that we did. That's great. And um, uh, Clifford, to follow up with you, yes, you would manage all of your accounts from a single Midland account. So you have one IRA. Uh, you can have multiple, but it, um, with one IRA, you can have multiple different assets. So for um, um, diversification, it's nice that you can have one account and multiple different types of investments. Um, also, uh, Clifford, I, you might have misheard. So rolling a Roth 401k into, actually, Rita, I'm sorry, does rolling the Roth 401k into the Roth IRA restart the clock? Oh, it only restart, or your clock is only restarted if you had never established a Roth IRA to begin with. Yep, so if you you're go. rolling it over from a Roth 401 and this is your first Roth IRA, your clock restarts versus if you kept it in the Roth 401k, that five year already started. Okay. All right. Um, and I think we have... Actually, um, Larry has been nice enough to share some information for those of you interested in what defines a collectible coin. So if you move from chat over to questions, um, Larry has given some information on and collectible coins. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry. And I can go off of what you were providing. So when you're buying gold or silver within your IRA, it, it pretty much has to be pure. So as Larry said, it has to be 0.99. 9% pure. So if you have a coin that's, you know, 0.5% gold, 0.5% nickel, it wouldn't be allowed in an IRA. And then I was also looking at one of the metals dealers and the coins that they offer. And, you know, they offer coins that are dated all the way back to 1795 or 1838. So certainly those are collectible coins because you're buying them for how old they are, not for the melt value that it would have. Now you, you could buy obviously a, a American Gold Eagle coin at 2015, maybe worth a little bit more than an American Gold Eagle coin that's minted in 2020. Again, per the IRS, that list that I had there, that's the metals that they allow you to buy within a IRA at the moment. Certainly a, a 2010 American Golden Eagle coin may have more value than a 2020 American Gold Eagle coin. But again, right now at this time, we're not here to determine if, if that's a collectible or not. A tw uh, American Eagle Gold coin is allowed. To piggyback off of that, if I can, I, I want to take some speculation off of this. This isn't going to be up for you as the client or the buyer of the metals to determine. If you indicate to your metals dealer that you are purchasing this for your IRA, they will know. Um, we have a good relationship with the um, depositories to the point where we have actually been told once you know, this specific metal, this coin is qualified, but it doesn't meet the fineness, the dealer will have to send out over a new one. Um, and so they'll, they'll send over what is qualified to be in the IRA. So it's not like you have to go and inspect the metals, that you have to hope that this is a qualified um, metal that you're purchasing. If you mention to your, to your metals dealer that you are looking to make this as an IRA investment, they will know exactly which coins they're even able to offer you. So it kind of takes some of that speculation off. That's really helpful to know. Thank you, Rita. Um, I did have someone asking specifically about the South African Krugerrand. And from what I can tell, it, those coins do not meet the fineness requirement. And uh, at this time are not allowed in the IRA. 
I just wanted to um, answer that question. But like Rita said, the the uh, brokers they offer um, they they can be a resource to you, so there you don't have to guess. Um, okay. So what about using futures options? Are there any restrictions on which broker allows trading futures options with an IRA? That's a great question. Um, you know, on our end, we have uh, no restrictions on that. You are able to simply reach out to your broker or to the trading company if you start with the trading company and let them know that you are going to be trading inside of an IRA. Now, any company that's familiar with, you know, Midland or self-directed IRAs will let you know immediately what your restrictions are, whether that's on options or even margin. Um, they may have differences in accounts based on an IRA account versus a personal account on what that margin is going to be or what those um, options are going to be. So to that, I would say we don't have any restrictions on it. It's a question that you ask your broker or the trading company because they're going to indicate whether or not there are any restrictions um, on their end. All right, great. And I think I had at least, okay. Um, we have a question. What will be the difference if trading traditional versus Roth? There's no difference there, at least not on our end. The difference is when you take a distribution, you know, when you finally are deciding, I'm going to use my, um, and I'm going to use it personally. The difference is going to be that if it's a traditional IRA, you receive a tax bill um, for your taxes the next year. If it's in a Roth IRA and you met those requirements of five-year rule and you're at least 59 and a half before you take out those funds, then there are no taxes owed on that distribution. So the actual trading, um, the every day that's going on, there's no difference whatsoever with a traditional versus a Roth. The difference comes down to um, your distribution. Yeah, great explanation. And um, I, I think we're going to go with our last question here, and I'll go ahead and take it. Um, it is a general IRA question. And thank you again, everybody. As a reminder, you're going to get a recorded version of this webinar. Um, I have uh, put aside a few names to send some additional information uh, via email. Um, you've got the contact info up here for Rita and Andy. Uh, they are specialized in the futures, Forex, and um, Rita can be a great resource to you for new accounts if you're interested in a self-directed IRA. Um, and Andy can also help you with your metals questions. So um, with the last question of the day, can I make a direct contribution to my checkbook controlled LLC? Um, if sent to Midland, would I have to pay fees to move funds to the bank for investing? So um, thank you for your question. So again, the the LLC is an extension of your IRA. Um, however, you, you are given the checkbook control for investment purposes, but that's where your um, that's where your privileges, if you will, end. Um, you still need to use the IRA account with Midland to do contributions and distributions. So you cannot directly contribute to the checkbook LLC, nor can you take distributions. Um, you know, we are a, fat, a flat fee-based company. So uh, we do have a reduced transaction fee to send additional funds to the LLC. So you would contribute to the IRA and we have a reduced transaction fee to then fund the LLC checking account. So um, again, everyone, thank you so much. I will be following up with those who I said I would. And um, I think we're going to go ahead and, and sign off. So hope everyone is staying well. And for those who are our clients, thank you so much. And if you're interested, um, contact Rita and uh, she'd be glad to help you in getting an account set up. All right. Thank you all.